am so excited because I have not seen this woman for so long. She is one of my favorite actresses. She always brings a brand new character to life. We're talking Mary Stout from Chris Pringle the Musical. Yes. Hi, Mary. Hey, Sam. <laughs> okay, so here. I know I love having you here. Um, when they asked me if I wanted to interview you, I was actually really, really thrilled. Oh. Okay. Um, I know your career, and it is so long and so extensive, but I want our readers to really know who you are. Okay. So can okay. you lead us through how you got started in the business? What was your first show up till now? Woo! <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, I sort of got hooked in, in the theater world um, when I was in college. You know, I'd done a little you know, high school musicals and stuff like that, you know. Um, and certainly was a singer, always was, um, knew that I could sing at a fairly early age and I sort of hid it because it was like, I have a voice, I can sing. But it took till college and then I was totally hooked. And I started doing auditions for summer stock and those kind of things in college. And of course that was it, you know, I was there. And um, did, uh, did finish college, well, sort of finished college. I went back and finished later, but um, and then I, I took a, a year off, which my parents were very upset, um, to do uh, a, some dinner, a dinner theater tour. So I was like, you know, I auditioned. Wait, wow. dinner theaters did tours? Uh, it was a dinner theater company out of Nashville, Tennessee called Professional Artists Productions Incorporated. And they sent out these dinner theater to these shows to like a maybe three, four, five dinner, different dinner theaters. So it was, good. it was a good gig. Well, I had auditioned in that August and that August of 70, 76, and was hired to replace someone who had to go to college. <laughs> so I replaced, uh, I replaced Cherry Jones. <laughs> wow was going off to Carnegie Mellon in The Good Doctor, the Neil Simon comedy play. So anyway, that was my sort of foray into a real job or so I thought. Well, I did several years of that kind of work. And then I said, well, I've got to finish college. So I went back and finished in the summer, went to, went to and got a job uh, teaching. I had a teaching degree. So I taught school two years in Nashville, Tennessee at the Children's Theater there. And of course, I couldn't stay off the stage. You know, I just, I would kept, I kept like going to community theater auditions and stuff because I wanted to perform so bad. So I moved to New York in 1979. And my first, my Broadway first production contract was the next summer at, uh, I did the Sound of Music at Jones's Bitch. That's what I call it, Jones's Bitch. <laughs> And, um, and I had gotten my equity card doing The Sound of Music, same show, um, at the Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater at the time. Yeah, I remember that. Yes, yes. And then, then from then on, I just kept doing things. And my Broadway debut was in 81. I have, you know, I'm, I'm so dang specific that, you know, I've sort of waited my turn for a lot of things and, and been very, very pleased and, and had a, and I've had a really full career of, of fun things. So, and I've always been myself, I think. So that's kind of fun. So you have. yes, that's sort of it. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I had six Broadway shows. I always wanted that seventh, but <laughs> I, I don't know, Christmas Carol at the Garden could be the seventh, Radio City. I did three years. That could be the seventh, I guess. But, you know, I always wanted that seventh, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> what was your favorite of all your shows? Um, I think Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre was was such a uh, an amazing gift to me, the best part of my life right then. I was on I was doing Beauty and the Beast. I'd done a reading of Jane Eyre um, at uh, uh, we did it Manhattan Theater Club hosted it, mm -hmm. and that was in '95. I went out on the road with Beauty and the Beast to play the the wardrobe, the dresser, right. and uh, for a year. And while I was out on the road, um, remember when 
my oh, television I show. <laughs> I did. I love that they show. In and they got picked up. So we filmed, I was able to do Beauty and the Beast and film 10, I filmed 10 episodes on my days off. I only missed like, oh, they said, I think it was about five or six shows to do 10 episodes. Isn't that amazing? So I did that. And while I was out yeah. on the road and I got the You're offer probably... to, to leave to do beauty. So I did. I know you were, that was probably your happiest time because you were so working. Or to do Jane Eyre. Yeah. And then I went off to do Jane Eyre. So I did a year of beauty and Jane Eyre and remember when in the middle of all of it. So that was a great time for me. <laughs> you know, now, was... how did you get involved in Chris Kringle? Well, um, quite a few years ago, I want to say, well, it was 10 years ago that I was asked to do a reading and, um, and I played Mrs. Santa Claus and that was great fun. And then after that, there was another reading, I think. And I think they'd already had the first production in Cleveland. And then, then, then there was a reading and another reading. And then we went to Washington for the Children's Theater Festival and did a, a week down there. So for a couple of performances. Uh, what else? Uh, there was another reading a few years ago in New York. I didn't do the town hall thing that they did last year. Then they, then I just figured my Mrs. Claus days were over. So then, and then they asked me to do the grandmother on the album, on the concept album. So I did the grandmother on that and was not cast as Auntie Sugar Plum that I play now, was uh, to go do the show up in, um, in Schenectady um, because they hired Eve Plum and she, I heard as Auntie Sugar Plum. I don't know where they came up with Plum Plum. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> which I heard she was lovely. And then when I heard they were going to do this virtual thing, I jumped on and it was great fun. And, and the people are so delightful between Maria Ciampi, everybody's delightful, just delicious. And we filmed here in my house in front of my wood stove and my Christmas tree. They bought, they sent me a Christmas tree which is all decorated and the wood stove would burn. And I was sitting in great grandmother's um, rocking chair and they sent me lighting equipment and everything. So I was learning a lot really <laughs> fast. <laughs> and it, you know, because it, it's a narration, of course I was able to read out of a book. Um, so there's, yes, thank God. I, I, I was a little disappointed to watch one, the one yesterday and I thought, why am I so in the book? You know, I wish I was talking to the camera more. Ooh, look at the kitty. <laughs> but he's decided to visit. Well, my cat is in the rocking chair, curled up next to the fire. So it's just her favorite place. <laughs> She's well, playing at the now. <laughs> his name is so, Hamlet. Yes. He decides to like come in. <laughs> okay. Well, she we filmed it in three three days. And then I had to come back and, um, and do some, some extra little things, which were off book. And I had to memorize those. So it was like three and a half days of filming. Not too bad, huh? <laughs> no, not too bad. No, no. What was your favorite part about filming this? Um, I think, I don't know. I, I love doing... I love doing the pitch after all. I know I had to memorize it, but because um, we're, we're raising, we're helping fund, you know, the actors fund. Right. And it was nice to put, to be able to talk to the camera about the importance of, of helping people in the entertainment industry, you know, to get through. And that, that was very, that was fun. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it was just such fun to like be at home and doing this. And, and feeling like I was a part of something at a time when it's hard to be, it's hard to feel a part of things right now. So and I, I'm by myself. So, hmm. Aww. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, I mean, it's fine. I have my kitty. I have my kitty. <laughs> I know. I have Hamlet. Um, yeah, but I don't, you know, even out here, I'm in the country and 
uh, because I did an escape from New York in March. And, um, you know, it's been really lovely, but I, I'm a little lonely, I must say. So, but, uh, but I'm buying another house. So, <laughs> so I'm buying a, a, a real house, I call it. It's oh. not that this isn't real, but this is, Got this it. is, I have to feed the wood stove to keep warm. So ah. a little rustic. So <laughs> this place has propane. <laughs> you've, had, you've had the country experience now. Oh, yes. Which I love being out here, you know, so I, you know, I have lots of friends here, theater friends galore, you know? Wow. Yeah, we even did a, um, tell me if I'm talking too much. No, <laughs> um, we even did a thing for Thanksgiving, which was so terrific. I highly recommend it. Um, about 12 of us met with our masks, okay, um, on Thanksgiving morning at 11 o'clock in an outdoor pavilion over here by the lake. And everybody was, was, was assigned something to bring, and we just all divvied it up. And, you know, there were containers, and some people brought things already in containers. I made cranberry sauce and cranberry relish and mashed potatoes. So people filled their plates and we had coffee and apple cider donuts and just visited at socially distanced. And then everybody went home and I felt like we were, we were actually having a little something, you know, and it was great. It was so nice to, and have leftovers, you know, we had leftovers. So I'm trying to make the best of absolutely everything, you guys. <laughs> no, we did the same thing, actually. Um, they say that eyes are the windows of the soul, but I think that songs are. So if you had to describe yourself using a song or a cycle of songs, oh, what would they be? Um, ah, that's a good question. Something that has to do with some, uh, a cycle of songs that has to do with home. Mm. Uh, I found one thing I found about myself in the last few years, particularly since the pandemic started, I love to, to be a part of, I, I love to cook, but I love to can. <laughs> And I've become quite a canner. <laughs> and my my newest thing is pepper pepper butter. So um, everybody gets jars of cranberry sauce or pepper butter or whatever that are pre preserved. So yeah. and, you know this year was tomato year too. So and I get get tomatoes from down from the Amish down in Pennsylvania. My mm -hmm. my uncle and I come back and I I did I had four bushel of heirloom tomatoes to can. So I did all of the above. So I think it would have to do with, with giving back. Um, shoot, I can't think of a specific song, but I know there's something there um, about, about being able to share and give back. And, and, and because I feel like that's part of me. Does that make sense? Makes so I don't, I don't have an exact song. Sorry, Susan. that's okay because I can think of tons of them that fit this. Oh, good, I just, home. I love, yes, I love that to guess and cope at home. Yes, I love that one. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? It's yes. a beautiful song. It's beautiful. So I can think of songs. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, what would you like people to know about Chris Kringle? I would love people to know that it is it is for everyone. It is for families, it is for loved ones, it is for children galore. It's a lovely story. I mean, the advent calendar is is a nice way to I love that. Isn't a great idea? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I wake up every morning and I go, ooh, day seven, day eight. You know, it's, it's so fun. And I watch the next installment. They're so short and lovely. But the and then the anticipation of seeing the whole thing put together in a much more succinct way and as a full musical it's just amazing you know um you know it's it's a lovely story you know the evil ceo he he crosses paths with the young toy maker and the young toy maker's just blown away by the by the north pole he's never been to any place more beautiful in his life and and it gives you a sense of hope 
and family. He finds a family there at the North Pole. But the most important lesson in the show, I think, is that it's about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. and, and I think putting the, you know, being able to follow through with the story, it's not just all cutesy and, and fun, and it is. It is. The kids are great. Everybody's great. But, and Santa's great, Mrs. Claw, you know, all of that. But being able to, to, to find a family in an unusual place like this, in, in a, you know, an unpredictable place, and the fun of being in the North Pole, and yet it's about forgiveness, and it's about finding, finding family. So I think that it is a terrific story. And I feel like I've been, as I say, I've been a part of it almost from the very beginning in 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 a sense and i've seen maria the writer and creator watched her mature as a writer and grow and i'm i'm telling you she really learned her lessons as a musical theater writer she had never done that you know and it was so great to see to see it all come to fruition after all these years to see it finally be a, you know, a wonderful little piece of theater that can be done by anybody anywhere, you know, it's licensed and, you know, so hopefully we'll see some productions of Kris Kringle the musical across the country next year. Wouldn't that be great? Hopefully we'll see productions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to see productions. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> I'm very positive about that one. <laughs> and my, uh, last, my last question. Yes. What is your Christmas wish for the world? Um, my Christmas wish is to, it is for everybody to, to embrace this time as unusual and hopefully never to happen again, but to embrace it in the sense of accept it because it is a gift in a way and it's not all negative. It's there's, there's something positive that comes out of this for everyone, you know? whether it's canned goods or, you know, or feelings. I mean, I've lost, I've lost a family member during the pandemic, not from COVID, but, but, you know, that's gonna, that's hard. That's hard. Um, but being able to, to, uh, I found my relationship with my sister has grown because of it, you know, so I feel like we're, we're, and she's going to come up here after Christmas. So we'll find a, we'll find a wonderful sense of peace with that, I think despite the tears and you know losing her only son but it's hard it's hard but you know i i'm try i try really hard to say it may be a blessing after all you know that he's in a better place so now yeah. i know why we became friends the very first time we ever met that's right <laughs> having our the same show. way that's right that's right oh okay. this was delightful last, you last always full uh, <laughs> right you have been listening to an interview with one of my favorite people, Mary Stout, who is in Chris Kringle, the musical. If you go to T2C online and what we have, what to watch every day, you will see we have this front and center because it is so special. Thank you, Mary. And it's free, 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 free. Yeah. <laughs> Good things come. Okay. Thank you all and have a merry, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.